folks, here's the most important stimulus news, and here's a lot of information that's going on about the Ford stimulus check. This is my research, everybody, and I hope you guys find this video useful. So, without wasting any more of your time, here it is. Now, a new social security payment schedule has been announced by Social Security. And I'll also be going over how much new stimulus money states and several cities across the country are actually receiving to help out the residents. Now, as December comes to an end, and another month passes with the crisis still ongoing, millions of people are actually urging President Biden to take up some more action for the American people. And also, send out more stimulus checks. We all know that the new surge is all... Has caused, has caused many people to worry. Additionally, as business is slow, some economists worry that without additional stimulus aid, the progress made in the economic recovery could be risked. So far, the new surge has not led to an increase in unemployment. The most recent unemployment claims report showed a slight increase, but the level is still remain lower than those before. Now folks, some small businesses have even voluntarily shut their doors as staff and customers get affected by the surge. Major private sector associations are calling for more stimulus checks. This seems to help us. So, President Biden must listen to his colleagues and people all across the country. We all know that stimulus checks are definitely necessary. The White House has even argued that the funds from the American Rescue Plan should ensure that states have resources on hand to support struggling businesses and workers and as well as families. Now, in early December, Chairman Jerome Powell voiced concerns over how the new surge in the crisis could actually harm the recovery. He actually said the recent rise poses a downside risk to employment and economic activity. Powell also mentioned that a new wave could reduce the willingness of workers to re-enter the workforce, which would only slow progress in the labor market and intensify supply chain disruptions. So folks, as the new year approaches and the crisis and economic impact became more clear, Leaders now have to send out more stimulus checks and increase the Social Security benefits, or at least do some sort of direct payment to American people. Now, should levels of unemployment quickly increase and consumer spending levels drop substantially, another direct payment could actually become a possibility. And that's the truth. Injury, disability, retirement in 2022 may be the first time you're actually receiving your Social Security benefits. Now, as new recipients wait into the financial system that is Social Security, big questions become simple. That is, when am I going to get my payments? For 2022, here's when beneficiaries will see the Social Security funds. According to CNN, for those on Social Security, if you have a birthday between 1st and the 10th of the month, you'll get benefit payments on the 2nd Wednesday of the month. And for the birthdays from the 11th to the 20th, expect payments on the 3rd Wednesday. Now finally, for birthdays on the 21st and 31st, you can expect your benefits on the 4th Wednesday of the month, and you can always check your next payment date by accessing your account online. For those on Supplemental Security, if you're not retired yet or have not started receiving your social security benefits, but still have some assistance coming, then payments come on for the first of each month. And this site payments are usually given to individuals that are about 65 years or older and who need more than what the social security administration provides. So getting a site is not preventing you from getting your normal social security payments when you're retired. Now folks, there are definitely higher payments than before and starting in 2022, the amount benefit recipients will be paid each month is increasing. Actually. Social Security beneficiaries will be seeing a 5.9% increase in the benefits to account for COLA. Now, it's the highest increase in almost 40 years, and the COLA is only based off the Bureau of Labor Statistics, CPI, or the Consumer Price Index. Now, this year, the Consumer Price Index actually hit historic levels of recorded inflation, coming in at 6.8% in November. And according to Social Security Administration, beneficiaries will now get around $1,700 on average per month, and that's all starting in 2022. Folks, if you have any more... If you have any more questions about the Ford Stimulus Check, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I'll do my very best in answering them. And the groceries mm -hmm. are too high and the child care is too high. And, and health insurance and is And too health high. insurance is too high. It's unbelievable. So we need to cancel student debt and end the predatory practices on our young people. Mm -hmm. Completely end the practice. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. It is my honor to now yield to the distinguished Congresswoman from Massachusetts, Miss Representative Ayanna Presley. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Congressman Bowman. Um, there is nothing freshman about you. You have hit the ground running since you've been here, and you have been uh, a leader and a partner on many issues, uh, including uh, this issue of student debt. So I thank you for your partnership on our congressional resolution calling for President Biden to provide broad-based student debt cancellation. Madam Speaker, I rise today on behalf of more than 45 million people in America crushed by the growing weight of the $1.7 trillion student debt crisis. 
the grandmother. You heard me right, the grandmother. I have 76-year-old constituents in the Massachusetts 7th still paying student loans, all while on Social Security and a fixed income. I rise on behalf of the new parents struggling to manage the skyrocketing cost of childcare, of which Massachusetts is the second highest cost in the country, $21,000 per child for center-based care. The new parents struggling to manage the skyrocketing cost of childcare, rent, and their student loan payments. The teacher who fears losing their teaching license because they have gone into default and can't come up with that monthly student loan payment, not even the minimum. The irony, debt that they incurred in order to be an educator, in order to be a nation builder, to pour into our children, the next generation. I rise on behalf of an entire generation of young people. Young people I met with uh, a couple of weeks ago, who when I asked them about their future, were despondent and expressed great hopelessness. Well, I don't know that I'm going to go to college because I don't want to be in debt for the rest of my life. And I fear if there will even be a planet for me to grow up in. I rise today on behalf of a whole generation of young people grappling with that sense of foreboding and despair. A generation of young folk who have been forced to hold off on pursuing education, starting higher education, starting a small business, purchasing a home because of record levels of student loan debt. And I rise on behalf of black and brown folk who due to generations of precise and intentional, what I would characterize as policy violence, have been forced to take on higher rates of student debt for just a chance at the same degree as our white peers. Mr. Speaker, the student debt crisis is one that disproportionately impacts our black community. But for too long, the narrative has excluded us. And in the unique ways in which this debt is exacerbating racial and economic inequities, compounding our gender and racial wealth gap. We have to borrow at higher rates just for a shot at the same degree as our white peers. Black women in particular bear the largest burden as they are forced to take on higher student debt loads, all while navigating a persisting wage gap that allows black women to earn just 61 cents to every dollar earned by a white man. These are systemic barriers that make it significantly more challenging to repay this debt. There are some who have questioned if this is regressive an impact to cancel student debt at $50,000. They've questioned the merit of as to whether or not this is a racial justice issue. We'll ask the presidents of the historically black college.